a whole lot going on in the Texas prison system tonight. We are on a statewide lockdown. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice has locked down every single state prison. So we are on day three right now. It's September 8th. We have heard so many rumors about where this lockdown came from and what was happening. The deal was early Wednesday morning, I woke up to a ton of messages from incarcerated people, from my friends that had loved ones on the inside, from family members that had loved ones on the inside saying the prisons are locked down. So like at 645 this morning, we knew or Wednesday morning, on September 6th, Wednesday, September 6th, we knew the prisons were all on lockdown and we didn't know why. Okay. So we're speculation is going on and we don't know. And then Texas had some weird things going on. Cash app was messing up. DMV computers were down. Uh, we got uh, power the power grid was like almost at capacity and we were getting warnings about shutting that down. So, you know, we didn't know if all of those things played in with each other or what I tend to believe that um, the prison system didn't have anything to do with the other things. And they locked down because of here's some information we got. There were several violent incidents, which this is what the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, like their official statement is that they locked down because there were a large number of violent incidents, even some ending in incarcerated persons losing their lives over illegal substances. Okay, so that was like their official statement. What they also did when they made this official statement, which they didn't make until about 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning, even though the prisons shut down, locked down in the middle of the night, they the official statement says Texas prisons didn't go on lockdown till 9 a.m. Okay, so there's a big discrepancy there. We know something happened, a catalyst happened in the middle of the night for them to lock everything down in the middle of the night, something happened. That something happened on the Styles unit. There was a disagreement between two organizations um, and I did not do my time in a men's prison. I am not an expert on these organizations. I'm only going by what several incarcerated men have told me has happened. And there was an, a disagreement between the organizations, the Tongo Blast, um, and the Bloods. Some kind of disagreement ended up in a fighting between those two gangs, like a small riot. And apparently the Crips jumped in to help the Bloods. And in turn, other Hispanic based organizations jumped in to help Tongo. And it ended up being a really large racial war. What we know about men's prisons in Texas is the organizations are statewide. They are not just at that unit. And what we also know is that they have means of communication to notify other units. Okay, so I think that that was one of the catalysts that locked the unit down that night. What we also know is that liquid K2 liquid drugs have been found in the prison in a water bottle. Okay, this was, we we kind of got a little insight of this. Tim Snow with Texas Prison Stories, he got some insight about possible liquid fentanyl. And then today, the Texas Department of Criminal, Criminal Justice posted on their social media posts and on their website that they found several water bottles and they say those that liquid in those water bottles tested positive for k2 so i don't know how that works right i know that you can liquefy k2 some way and spray it on paper and i know that a small percentage of illegal substances coming into our prison system does come through the mail these large bottles of liquid probably didn't come in through the mail you feel me? So 
that's another thing that's going on. <laughs> Brian Collier, the executive director of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, makes an official statement saying, basically, they're cracking down on illegal substances and in an effort to make the prison safer. And he they they made a snitch line and they're encouraging staff, family, incarcerated folks to call the snitch line. The head of the office of um, the office of inspector general, he also put a video out on TDCJ website saying pretty much the same thing and also saying that anybody found caught trying to get illegal substances into the Texas prison system will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, right? There are some additional incidents that we believe led up to this lockdown. Um, we're hearing a lot about a sergeant that got stabbed in the neck by an incarcerated person. I don't have the name of that sergeant, but I have heard from enough sources to know that there was probably a staff assault. Um, the last that I understood is this officer was in the hospital and they were not even sure if he was going to survive. So my heart definitely goes out to that officer and their family. Also on the Styles unit during that riot, probably at least one incarcerated person lost their life, and at least one is at, hosp at the hospital near Galveston um, in pretty bad shape. Additionally, there was an incident possibly on the Polunsky unit where an individual killed their cellmate and the officers did not discover that this had happened until hours and hours, possibly days later. So the way I'm getting this intel, guys, is on my social media platforms and then people that I know on the inside that are sending me messages and texts and um, sending even e-messages through their tablets. Uh, so when I get 12 and 15 and 20 saying basically the same thing from that broad amount of sources that's when I'm that's when I'm going to say it on video right I'm going to wait until that so we have been hearing about a lot of other violent incidences that have happened um, but I haven't got a bulk of them to share right so what do we do for our incarcerated loved ones that are inside going through this lockdown in this brutal heat? We're getting reports of the food being very poor, poor food, poorly fed, fed not on time. Um, lots of information coming in about the Beto unit that they went 20 plus hours without getting fed. Who do we contact? And it, that's a really tricky situation, right? Because if you contact the ombudsman on behalf of your loved one in particular, then you put them at risk for retaliation. So like my kind of go-to with that is unless your incarcerated loved one says, hey, will you contact the ombudsman? I would stay clear from that. I do encourage you to call the unit and give the whole dorm name. And I do that myself when I call to kind of advocate for incarcerated people. I'll say, I'm not giving the name. This is the dorm they were they are in. You need to check on that dorm. That dorm's not getting ice water. <laughs> that dorm's not getting fed. That kind of thing. Um, anyways, this has a, been a really hard three days. And we're just know that those folks on the inside are having it really rough. What does a lockdown exactly entail when it includes a search? So you guys know the units have biannual lockdowns twice a year. Every unit in the state locks down. They just don't do it all at once, right? Some of the units have just come off of that biannual lockdown just to turn around and go right back down. We're still in triple 
double-digit weather here in Texas. So it is still dangerous. It is still brutal. People are still falling out from heat-induced illnesses. So this will just kind of exasperate some of that. So encourage your loved ones to be drinking as much as possible, even when the water is brown, even when it feels wrong to be drinking it because it sometimes that water in there has a smell, um, all kinds of stuff, but it's really important that they stay hydrated, try to stay cool, try to stay calm. And until next time, I will try to bring some more updates as they come. Love you all.